In this video, you're going to learn how to find the magnitude and the direction of a vector, and we're going to go through three examples together. So let's dive into this first example. We're given this vector here, negative 5, 12, and let's graph that just so we can take a look at what this looks like. So this is 5 in the uh, negative x direction, so we're going left 5, up 12, and if I draw an arrow to represent that vector, this is the horizontal component negative 5, and the vertical component, positive 12. But what we want to do is we want to find the length, which represents the magnitude or how strong that vector is, if it was like a force. Now, we have a formula here that we can use. It's the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared of our vector in component form. But just so you understand, you can think of this as a right triangle. You're going left 5, you're going up 12, and you can do the Pythagorean theorem, and that's essentially where this formula comes from. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So the magnitude, which is represented by these vertical bars here, the magnitude of vector v, is the square root of negative 5 squared plus 12 squared. Add them together, take the square root. So this is going to be 25 plus 144. That's the square root of 169, which is equal to 13. So that's how long that vector is that represents the magnitude. So now let's take a look at the direction of the vector. Remember, a vector is made up of two components, made up of a magnitude, which is like you know, how strong like a force is, as well as the direction, like where is that force being directed. And so it's different from a scalar, which is just like a number. So when we find the angle, we can use this formula here, theta equals tangent inverse of y divided by x. And so let's go ahead and do that. That's tangent inverse of the y component 12, divided by the x component, negative 5. I'm going to go to the calculator and make sure my mode here is in uh, degrees. So I've got the tangent inverse. You might have to press the second key first. Uh, 12 divided by negative 5. I'm getting an angle here of negative 67.4 degrees, just rounding to the tenth. But if we look at this here, negative 67.4 degrees, that's actually going to be clockwise from the positive x-axis right here. But you can see that our angle is actually, or our vector is actually going in this direction here. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add 180 degrees. Now you might be saying, Mario, uh, why is that? Why is this giving us the wrong answer? Well, remember when you learned about the unit circle and you were working with the inverse trig functions, tangent inverse, so that it only gives you one output or one answer, is restricted from negative 90 to positive 90, or negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So that's why it's giving us this angle here. You can see that this angle and this angle are congruent. So what I'm doing is I'm doing 180 minus 67.4, or this was a negative angle, I just added 180, and that's going to give us the correct direction that our vector is uh, being exerted. So this is a negative 67.4 plus 180. So it's actually the angle is 112.6 degrees. Magnitude 13, direction 112.6, and that's counterclockwise from the positive x-axis direction. Let's take a look at the next example. Okay, for example number two now, we have this vector, 8i plus 15j. So this is a linear combination of standard unit vectors. What this means is, i is like a, uh, a vector in the x-direction that's one unit long, and j is a vector in the y-direction that's one unit long. And so, I oftentimes, I'm not a big fan of this um, linear combination of standard unit vectors. I like to write it in the component form with these uh, triangular brackets, uh, 8, 15, but really they, they represent the same thing, the same vector. So what we're doing is we're going 8 in the positive x direction, we're going 15 in the y direction, and if we draw our vector, it looks something like this. So, okay, right 8, up 15. Now, if we want to find the magnitude, which represents the length of this vector, or how strong this force is, again, we can use our formula right here, and that's going to be uh, the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. Add them together and take the square root. Again, it's just based on the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared uh, is equal to c squared. And you might notice that this is a Pythagorean triple, 8, 15, 17, but if you don't recognize that, you can just use the formula. This comes out to 64 plus 225, which is the square root of 289, and that's equal to 17. That's the length of the vector. Now, if we want to find the direction, okay, the angle that the vector is being you know, exerted at, 
we're going to use this formula right here. Theta is equal to the tangent inverse of the y component divided by the x component. And this should make sense to us because what's the tangent? Tangent's the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent. This is the y component, this is the x component. And we're doing the inverse tangent to solve for the angle. So let's go ahead and do that. So theta is equal to the tangent inverse of 15 over 8. I always like to draw the vector because, like we saw in that first example, sometimes the uh, calculator and this formula give you the wrong angle because of the restricted domain of tangent inverse. So it's good to sketch it and just verify that you've got the right angle. So let me do this tangent inverse of 15 divided by 8. I'm getting an angle of, just rounding, this is about 61.8. Uh, uh, degrees, and that makes sense. This is counterclockwise from the positive x axis direction. Uh, that's our angle. Now, one note I wanted to say about these bars some books will uh, write it with like a double a set of bars to represent the magnitude of the vector, so it kind of depends on, on the textbook. But again, that's the length of the vector. So let's take a look at one last example. Okay, for example number three, we've got vector AB, that's what we want to find the magnitude and direction of, and they're giving us point A and point B. So this is like our initial point, this is our terminal point. Let's sketch it just to get a feel for what this looks like. So uh, 2, 3 means we're going right 2, up 3, that's point A, our initial point. B is at negative 4, negative 5, so right about here roughly, and our vector is something like that, just a rough sketch, okay? Now when we find the vector in component form, what we can do is we can use a formula terminal minus initial. So terminal minus initial. So it means the ending point, which in this case is B minus the starting point A. So the way I would do this, I would do negative 4 minus 2 and negative 5 minus 3. And so this comes out to negative 6 comma negative 8. And so what this really means is that this vector is going 6 to the left okay, in the x direction, and 8 down in the y direction, and that's kind of how we're getting this resultant vector a, b. So again, this is a negative 6, this is negative 8, and we're trying to find the length of that vector, the magnitude of the vector. So again, we can use this formula, uh, or we can use the Pythagorean theorem, and so this would look like uh, negative 6, the quantity squared, plus negative 8, the quantity squared, add those together and take the square root, it gives us 36 plus 64, which is the square root of 100, which we know is 10. So that's the magnitude of the length. Now, if we find the direction or the angle that the vector is uh, directed at, we can use this formula right here. So it's going to be theta equals tangent inverse of y over x. And in this case, it's going to be the tangent inverse of the y component, negative 8 over negative 6. And let's go to the calculator again on this one. Uh, tangent inverse of negative 8 divided by 6, is giving me an angle of approximately 53.1 degrees. Now, we want to analyze this because, again, remember vectors, you can translate them left and right, up and down. You don't want to turn them or rotate them because that would change the direction angle. So if I wanted to just graph this negative 6, negative 8 with the initial point at the origin, left 6, down 8, my vector would look something like this, roughly. Okay. But you can see this angle, 53.1, that's actually over here in the first quadrant, right, 53.1. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add 180 degrees because I'm over here in the third quadrant. Again, see, imagine this vector, if I pick it up and shift it so that this point A is at the origin, the vector would look like this. We're not changing the length. We're not changing the angle or the direction. I'm just changing the starting point here. So all these vectors that are like this, they're all equivalent. It's just a matter of you know, where they're starting. So again, let's add 180 to get the, our actual direction of our vector, and that comes out to 233.1. So I'll just write our angle, 233.1 degrees. So magnitude and direction. So great job if you're able to follow the examples in this video. If you want to learn more about vectors, I have kind of an introduction to vectors where we get into not only magnitude and direction, but other aspects of working with vectors. I'll put a link to that video right there. Follow me over. It's a great video to kind of get you up to speed with vectors. So I'll see you in that video right there, and we'll get some more practice.